Cortex comes with more than 100 analyzers for popular services such as VirusTotal and Malwarebazaar, which allows for the automated analysis of any suspicious observables like IP and email addresses, domain names, files and hashes. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up these analyzers and we're going to see them in action. Let's get started. In the previous episode, we did a quick recap of our lab deployments so far. I suggest that if you've not watched that video yet, that you go back and you watch it first to bring yourself up to speed before continuing with this one. Analyzers, also referred to as neurons in the context of Cortex, are basically small programs, most of which are written in Python, however other languages are supported. And these neurons are deployed using Docker containers, which Cortex spins up as needed to complete the analysis process. In order to make this work, the preferred method is to allow Cortex to spawn a new Docker container for the neuron on our host server by using the docker.soc unix socket that the Docker service is listening on to access its API. In addition to this, we need to map or share the temp Cortex jobs volume between the Cortex container and the host so that the neuron running in its own Docker container can access these files when completing its analysis process. If you don't have this set up correctly, the job won't run and it will throw out errors. There's an alternative way of doing this setup as described in the Docker Compose file. However, it's not recommended because it can create security risks. However, perhaps it's something that you may want to try in your lab environment. Once you've spun up your Dockers and all the services are running, you'll need to log into Cortex using the account that you set up for yourself, like I showed you in the previous video. Most of the analyzers being third-party services require an API key to work. So before you continue, you're going to have to head over to Virus Toad and sign up for a free account to get your API key. You can then repeat this process for Malwarebazaar. You'll need to sign up using your Twitter account to generate your API key. So once you have your API keys, we're going to head over to Organizations and to Analyzers. And in the search box at the top, we're going to search for Virus Total. And the one that we're interested in is this virus total underscore get report 3.1. As you can see, I've already set this up in my Cortex. However, in order to do this, you'll simply click enable and you'll see you'll have a little menu or form like this. And then you're going to be putting in to this section where it says key, the API key, which you created for yourself in the previous step. All the other settings in here for now, we can just leave as default and you'll click save. This virus total analyzer will allow us to scan and report on files, hashes, domains, and IP addresses. Then we're going to repeat the same steps for Malwarebazaar. So you'll search for Malwarebazaar and then this is the analyzer that we would like to set up. We'll enable it. You'll give it your API key and you will then apply all the settings and save. We're then going to head over to the top menu and click on analyzers. And then you'll see that the two analyzers that we just enabled will be here for Malwarebazaar and for VirusTotal. And from here, we can now run these analyzers manually. So in order to do that, you'll click on run. And you see you'll have a little menu like this. So quickly, just to explain what TLP and PAP and all these options are. TLP is the abbreviation for traffic light protocol, and it's used to designate the sensitivity of information at hand to ensure that the, the information is shared with the appropriate audience. So a red TLP, like you see over here, would mean that this information is highly sensitive and it's for the eyes and the ears of the immediate individuals dealing with the case. A amber TLP is slightly more relaxed and this information can be shared within the department. And then a green TLP uh, is even more relaxed, which means that the information could be shared with a trusted community or partner organization. And then finally, a white or clear TLP means the information has no restriction and it can be shared with the public. Then moving over to PAP or PAP, 
PAP is short for permissible actions protocol, which uses the same color scheme as TLP. However, the use is different. PAP or PAP is a protocol that describes what a security analyst is allowed to do with the information on hand. For example, uh, red would mean uh, that you're only allowed to do non-detectable passive actions like checking logs and so on. Amber is less restrictive, uh, so you can run checks against virus total, for example. And then green means that you are allowed to run active scans or pings uh, against the target or even block the outgoing traffic. And white has no restrictions at all. PAP is useful because in some cases you may not immediately want to tip the bad actor off that they're being monitored or investigated. So you would then use a red or a amber classification to avoid this, where in other cases, this may be more relaxed and you could go with a green or white classification. Okay, so just a quick demo to show you how this works. We are then at the top going to click new analysis and then we'll just leave the TLP and the PAP as is. We're gonna test using a hash that I found online. So we'll select the hash option. And then in the data field, we're gonna include that hash that I found. And then over here, we can choose which analyzers we wanna run. So in this case, let's run Malwarebazaar and virus total. And we're gonna click start. And then you'll see that both these jobs will be put into the queue. They're currently in a waiting status and the jobs will run and take a few minutes depending on how much information they need to retrieve. So once the jobs have completed, you'll see their status will be updated to success. And then we're free to go into the job by clicking on the view button and we can go and get some information about it. So all this reporting comes back in a, a JSON format. It's not particularly human readable. However, if we look on the left-hand side here, it gives us some basic information saying that that Malware Bazaar has found that this is actually a Conti ransomware, which is a pretty popular ransomware over the years. And um, yeah, it will give you some information about what it found. So its level would state that it's malicious, uh, what value it is. Let's quickly go back and go and have a look at the virus total report so similar to malware bizarre we can see in this report that it's also come back as malicious and if we look at the bottom it picks up it gives us a little bit more information saying that it's a raw file a compressed archive and if we scroll down here's a little bit more information about it that it's a trojan ransomware and once again that it also points to the conti ransomware because this reported information is not very human readable in the next video i'm going to show you how we can use the integration that we set up in previous videos to bring this information into the hive and tied into one of the cases that we create which gives us a much more user-friendly human readable interface to work with and so we can analyze this data properly i'm also going to show you how to set up the observables and then we can run the analysis using our analyzers in cortex against that and see what the results are to avoid making this video too long we're going to wrap it up here if you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon.